Hey, Steve Stretsky here, as always, Canadian Real Estate Market Update with a particular focus on Vancouver. If you're getting sort of value or entertainment out of these videos, all I ask you to hit thumbs up and subscribe. Questions, comments, put those below. Uh, for those of you that have been following along over the past couple years, this this journey through uh, YouTube where you know we started at a couple hundred views, now we're looking on, on an average of about 10,000 views a video, you'll, you've probably noticed that the content as well has also transformed and it's, I'm trying to build on something that's more than just the real estate market because I'm extremely passionate on Canadian finance, macroeconomics, and you know that's ultimately what this channel is about. It's just kind of creating a dialogue around financial education uh, and really discussing the, the larger uh, overlay. Obviously, we have a focus on you know real estate and, and Canadian economics, but there's something that I want to discuss today that kind of hits home because if you don't see this, if you don't understand this, you know, part of the, the picture, you're going to miss a lot of big things. So what I want to discuss today is central bank digital currencies. This is where the world is going. So as we can kind of get down this rabbit hole and we, people ask, well, how come real estate's going up in a, in a recession? Uh, a lot of this has to do, again, with comes down to monetary policy and what the central banks are doing behind the curtains. And obviously we know about the QE, you know, the central bank money printing, again, Q, quantitative easing globally, so central bank, aka money printing, has now hit $26 trillion on a global scale. That's across our, our central banks. So we know that this game is not necessarily sustainable. Again, rates at zero, a lot of these central banks going into negative interest rate territory. Um, it's this kind of charade that you kind of have to keep going now. There's just so much debt in the system and this, this, this kind of Ponzi needs to continue. And so the central banks are obviously aware that we're kind of, they're, they're pinned up against the wall and the next natural transition is into a digital currency, a central bank issued digital currency. Um, we've had over the last couple years, this kind of turned into initial discussions and has slowly morphed into reality that has only been sped up now because of this pandemic, as has a lot of other things. So uh, a couple years ago, we had Mark Carney, former Bank of Canada governor, uh, discuss that you know the, the, the US dollar as the world's reserve currency was no longer working uh, for the system. It was creating a lot of inefficiencies. And he talked about the need, you know, about the possibility of a, a digital currency. And most recently during this pandemic, we've had now, we've had the head of the IMF talk about just recently a new Bretton Woods moment. They're calling this the Bretton Woods moment of 2020. Um, if you don't know about that, the Bretton Woods back in 1944 was a, a global movement to to come to an agreement on a, a on a U.S. dollar payment system uh, back in 1944. So really, just changed the the course uh, of of monetary policy um, and, and the way that global payment is settled. And so now they're calling this the Bretton pa Bretton Woods moment again of 2020, uh, talking about digital digital central bank digital currencies. Um, in fact, they actually uh, did an interview with Jay Powell. Uh, they did a, a global interview here on the feasibility and possibilities of global central bank digital currencies. And so we actually had Jay Powell tune in on that with his thoughts right here. I'd like to start by saying right uh, that we are committed to carefully and thoughtfully evaluating the potential costs and benefits of a central bank digital currency for the U.S. economy and payment system, as well as for its international implications. We've been actively participating with other central banks and the BIS in that work, and we feel that that collaboration has been very productive. We have not made a decision to issue it, a CBDC, and we think that there's a great deal of work yet to be done as well as extensive public consultation to be had with all stakeholders before making such a decision. The dollar is the world's principal reserve currency, as you pointed out, and I assure you that we will be approaching this question with great care. That said, something like 80% of central banks around the world are exploring the idea of issuing currency in digital form. The opportunities and, and risks presented by a CBDC will differ by country and by jurisdiction, and the decision whether to issue a CBDC will be made by each individual country. So there, there are several reasons why a central bank might, might want to do so. 
For example, uh, there are a number of ways that a CBDC might improve the payment system, and it is mainly this area that motivates our interest. These include basic issues such as faster and cheaper transactions, and more complex issues from addressing a decline in the use of physical currency to modernizing payments infrastructure to reaching consumers that have traditionally been underserved by financial institutions. Other potential motivations are more macroeconomic in nature. Each jurisdiction will need to think carefully what its, what its principal motivations may be. And for the Federal Reserve, as I mentioned, our main focus is on whether, whether and how a CBDC could improve an already safe, effective, dynamic, and efficient domestic payment system. So basically the essence here, what, what Jay Powell maybe didn't explain in that clip, is the way that money is currently created. You have commercial banks. Okay, so you have RBC, TD, whatever. You have your commercial banks, and then you have that governs, kind of oversees all of them, is your central bank. So when the central bank gives down a mandate, so they lower interest rates, they then pass that down into these commercial intermediaries that then are responsible for issuing out credit. But unfortunately, if the central bank tells these banks to do something, it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll do it. For example, if they want them to lend money, what we've seen over the past number of years is that a lot of these banks aren't actually lending out the money, they're actually just storing it as reserves uh, at the central bank. So they're not, that money is not actually flowing out through the economy. Um, so by creating a digital currency at the central bank, in essence what you would have is you would have a digital wallet um, similar to you know, a Bitcoin wallet or, um, you know, it basically is a virtual wallet at the central bank where they would basically, they, they have the power now to do direct injections into your uh, central bank account wallet. So for example, we just had this pandemic CERB, as opposed to going through the federal government and coming up with a scheme to get CERB checks out, the central bank would literally just instantly press a button and you're, you would have $2,000 in your central bank digital currency wallet. Um, so this basically creates a scenario, a slippery slope where the central bank marries the federal government and they almost become intertwined and it becomes this totalitarian state that basically has more power. Um, and through this mechanism, basically, it it almost it almost eliminates the the relevancy of these commercial banks like what if 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 you have a digital wallet at the bank of canada the bank of canada now has the ability to basically direct money into people's wallets they can essentially just create loans themselves hypothetically if they wanted to so it basically almost removes banks as intermediaries basically the central bank bypasses them and goes directly to the end user. So for example, now we say, well, okay, what are the larger ramifications of this in the bigger picture? Well, we've had central banks coming out and saying, well, we should consider negative interest rates. There's been papers written that suggest uh, interest rates can and should be considered to go as low as negative 5%. Now, if you're a, a central bank that has complete control of the money supply via, again, uh, wallets at the central bank, they can just simply impose a, a deep negative interest rate on your wallet. Um, they can, you know, if you're a restaurant owner now uh, that is struggling in this pandemic and you need a liquidity injection, the central bank will just instantly and automatically fund these restaurants, for example. So it basically gives all the power back up to the central banks. Um, and so this is, Again, I, I look at this and say, well, this is obviously a slippery slope that we're going down, but it is essentially inevitable with technology and where monetary, see, monetary policy is at. We're, you know, we're talking about things like MMT, uh, where again, I think that we're, we're going into a system where the federal government will essentially marry the central bank and the two will essentially be combined. Um, and we're gonna see uh, a continuing slowdown or redundancy in, in commercial banks. And that's why we can see that the, the central banks are essentially killing off the banking system as it is. Zero interest rate policy 
destroys the banking sector. Look at the strength of the banks in Japan, look at the strength of the banks in the European Union, and now we can see that they're getting hit uh, everywhere else. So if you keep interest rates where they are, and then you bring in digital currencies at the central bank, again, it kind of, it kind of essentially gets rid of the need for these commercial banks to some extent. Um, and uh, so again, where does this all lead us to? Uh, I'm certainly not one to bring uh, you know, financial advice, it's more discussion, discussions on the bigger picture, but one can't help but think and talk about and contemplate, at least think about it, is where this leads Bitcoin. Obviously, it's, it's been in the media headlines. I was a person that personally was extremely skeptical a couple of years ago. Over the last year, I've been uh, buying a position in Bitcoin, slowly kind of, you know, dollar cost averaging in, so to speak. And I think that this is becoming more and more a reality. We had PayPal out this week uh, announcing that they're now going to allow Bitcoin to be held in your PayPal wallets. Um, and then the recent announcements of the IMF and the Federal Reserve and every other central bank talking about digital currencies, you can clearly see where the system is going. And I think that Mike Novogratz, money manager, uh, really explain the recent price action in Bitcoin and kind of where he sees this all going. Um, so I'm going to clip his thoughts right here. So let me ask you though about that correlation because because with risk on, people are taking uh, more uh, more bets on things like Bitcoin. But how much of that is a bet on a bet on Bitcoin or or the issues around just printing cash versus the the operational potential as a transactional currency, given the news we just heard from PayPal, that PayPal is going to allow cryptocurrencies as part of the wallet. How does that change yeah. this? I think that's, you know, the, in some ways, the shot heard around the world on Wall Street, right? PayPal has 346 million accounts, right? They're the 30th biggest bank in the U.S. in deposits. And all of a sudden, every financial institution says, wait a minute, what do I'm doing? And so if you're at the boardroom of Morgan Stanley or Goldman Sachs or Bank of America, you're thinking, how do I get engaged? I was looking before I came on at just stock prices, right? Ethereum, the platform that this new financial ecosystem is going to be built on is up 200% this year. Square app, 186%. PayPal, 99%. And then you go to Wells Fargo, down 60. Citibank, down 46. And so if you're a CEO of a big bank, you're saying, well, hold on, what's going on here? And so we are going to see over the next 10 years a rebuilding of the financial infrastructure of this country. Uh, it was interesting that PayPal hired uh, Paxos to do their integration with crypto because there's a domain expertise in this cryptocurrency space, in this blockchain space that's needed. Um, when I lived in Alabama, I was a helicopter pilot. There was a town called Enterprise, and they had a statue uh, that held up a bow weevil. And I was like, the craziest statue I've ever seen. Well, the bow weevil ate all the cotton, and then they planted peanuts, and that brought pros prosperity to the region. In some way, the cryptocurrency community is going to hold up uh, a virus, the, 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 the COVID virus, because it was the COVID virus that really accelerated, as horrible as that to sound, accelerated adoption of crypto on two ways. The macro story with Bitcoin and the more maybe important story of right. digitalization of all cash, digitalization of the financial uh, services system. Uh, that's going to mostly be built on Ethereum. So I want to hear in your in your comments below, in the comments below, I want to hear your thoughts on central bank digital currencies, and I want to hear your thoughts, personal thoughts on Bitcoin. What love it or hate it? Uh, this is a channel where it is designed to create a dialogue and a discussion around personal finance, again macroeconomics, and um, last but not least. If there's one video that I'll encourage you to watch, you guys know that I'm a big supporter of Real Vision TV. Um, I personally am a subscriber. I've been on and interviewed on that show, on that network. And there was a fantastic interview out by Raul Pal, the co the founder, co founder of Real Vision, who basically uh, discusses the digital currencies, the digital currency movement um, in, de in further detail and his bullish view and why he's a long Bitcoin, and uh, that is now on YouTube. There will be a link to that below where you can go check out Raul's interview. I highly encourage you to check that out, but I hope this video brought you some value, some entertainment, and we'll see you next week.